uh, and I had put Missouri on there. My apologies to the Vinny Vinny Vici Fight League, and they're also known as V3 Fights. Now, uh, our next guest, Jennifer Pomonti, is also representing Scorpion Fighting Systems, uh, trains with Bobby, uh, our, our last guest there. And she is competing for the Women's Bantamweight Championship against Amberlynn Orr. Not Amberlynn, James. Amberlynn Orr. Not, 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 not Amberlynn, Amber who? Not Amberlynn, your favorite actress from the 80s, but Amberlynn Orr. And welcome to the show, Jenna Monty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, now, we just uh, got done talking to Amanda, and we, we had you in the green room to listen to that. We're just going to build right on the momentum of that and let people know. I saw Jen competing as an amateur probably, gosh, it must have been 2012, perhaps even 2011. She was yeah, just getting sure. started. Right? Yeah. Was it right around then, Jen? Yep. Okay, cool. And you were just getting started, and you were – Focused. I mean, you were you're a fierce competitor. I saw some great battles where you were representing yourself well. Uh, recently, it looks like you've joined up with this women's team that is really, you know, pushing themselves to the forefront nationally, if not just here in our state and in the Midwest with Scorpion Fighting Systems. And my first question is, um, you know, since I've got to see you develop. Uh, and early in your fight career, how do you feel now as you get ready to step into that cage fighting for a, a bantamweight championship in September? Yes. And what has changed for you since joining up with this team, Jen? I just can't tell you how much I've evolved as a fighter uh, ever since I've been with Scorpion Fighting System. Um, I was originally a fighter with, uh, with three hours up north. And, uh, you know, I was doing good in my amateur days and, once I, you know, started winning more and more fights, I was just like, man, this is really something I love and I want to make a career out of, you know, then I need to go where the best of the best is. And, you know, my goal was always to be with SFS, Scorpion Fighting Systems, and uh, I think I hit James up last summer sometime, and I arranged and saved my money up to make the move down to Fowlerville and Brighton at SFS, and ever since, you know, I did that, it's been the best thing for me, and... I'm so excited for this next fight, and I know that, you know, I'm more confident than ever. I've had about eight to ten backouts in the last year, and that's super frustrating. You know, I've fought most of the girls in Michigan now. I've fought out of state a couple times. I'm sure you guys heard about the female mega camp that we had at SFS uh, recently and uh, this past summer, which was amazing. You know, I got to test myself against professionals and see where I stack up against some of the best in the world, including Tanya Evangers and us and, you know, a lot of others. So, you know, I'm training with professionals every day, and it's just uh, the best thing that's happened to me, and I'm more than prepared for this fight. James? My well, all righty then. So you're fighting – I'm. Who's fighting? Are you fighting in Missouri on September 5th? or what? I'm fighting in, uh, fighting in Mississippi. 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 Okay. I was just trying to remember who's fighting on what days and got me all confused okay. and mixed up here. Now, yeah, so who's... two and a half weeks, and then Bobby's is in three and a half weeks. So it's pretty awesome that me and her are training partners, and we're also in training camp together, and we're also roommates. So, you know, it's super awesome. I got a question for you. How how did you feel fighting? I heard about your training camp, a two week thing with with uh, the girls coming in from all over the world. How did you how did you fare with the competition? Was there good competition in the room? Were these other girls professional level, or uh, you know, how did how did you rank with them? Did you were you competitive? Yep, and we you know rolled with them. We actually also did uh, simulated cage fights with actual corners. Um, you know, against the professionals, you know, I beat one of the top girls from London, which is also a professional. She was on the Ultimate Fighter, you know. So it's just pretty awesome Sweet. that, like, to see how much I've improved as a fighter since I've been with Scorpion Fighting System. Awesome. How long have you been training with them now? Uh, a little over a year now. Awesome. Now, you were training up north, you said? Yeah. I was Did you find different gyms up here, and then I was all, you know, fighting downstate, of course. I fought out of state a couple times in Colorado, 
Minnesota, stuff like that, Wisconsin. Now, is this going to be your pro debut this, on, on, on the no, coming up here? No, this, this is still an amateur fight. Okay. Uh, me and Amberlynn, you know, are at the end of our amateur careers, of course. Uh, I'm looking to go pro here within the next year. Awesome. Now, who's helping you with that decision? Is that something you're talking with your coaches, or are you just deciding it on your own? Yeah, uh, James, James Gray and Brian Fornicero, Bobby Cooper. You know, all my coaches from Scorpion Fighting System. That's, uh, you know, that's the road that we were definitely taking just because it's so frustrating having girls back out on you left and right, you know, going through fight camps, cutting the weight, you know. It's just super frustrating. And then, you know, they back out on you the day of weigh-ins or the day of fight night, and it's just like, man, all that hard work, you know. So I'm just super hungry for a fight, you know. I can't wait to get in there again. And I got to imagine, you know, I've, I've gotten plenty of calls from different promoters like, yo, hey, do you got a girl uh, that can, you know, take this place? And it's very, very difficult to find a, a female opponent a lot of times, especially short notice. So I can imagine it's very hard to fill cards where guys are a lot easier because there's more an abundance of, of the MMA fighters. Yeah, so. for sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, the, the promoters definitely always say, you know, we'll try to look for you a backup, you know, for – tomorrow or blah, 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 but we're sorry your opponent backed out, you know, and then it never happens, so I'm just like, man. Well, don't, tell me you, obviously you know you're not new to the sport. Guys do it all the time as well, but just easy to replace a lot of times, that's all. Yeah. I really cannot stand that when people just don't show up or, you know, I get if you get hurt or something like that. Uh, but. You know, it's, it's so disrespectful too, you know. It's like, why are you a fighter? <laughs> What's your I purpose? I I think Are you just here to piss people do. off? What I've no, seen, bro. Maybe, maybe, I think a lot of people just it, do it for the attention, you know? <laughs> well, you're from up north, Jen, so you've seen it, and that's one of the reasons, I think, kind of why you might have seen it a little more than some other competitors, because, even, you know, you take away, uh, not only is it, it women's mixed martial arts divisions, which are very thin ranks to begin with, but then you you get north of US 10 and you see more trees than you do people. And <laughs> right, a, yeah. A lot of people will, you know, and, and it's I feel ironic, I feel really funny saying this because, you know, when we've interviewed James Gray, he says he trained himself off of YouTube, which, you know, hey man, if you're the exception to the rule and you want to run with that story, go ahead, but there's a lot of talent and dedication and hard work there, but the dude does have a unique approach that is his own now moving past that you see what i think happens a lot you guys is that someone will get pumped up to believe that that they can go and fight and whatever motivation that either the matchmaker or their coach and i i use that term loosely because sometimes you know uh, you know i'm not trying to discourage anyone but at the same time when I see somebody that isn't trained trying to say they're a coach or they're wearing a T-shirt with the mm -hmm. word coach on it, you know, now it's one thing if you're carrying all the stuff and helping people get ready, sure, you're an assistant, but if you're not being trained by anybody, you got some regular person just pumping you up. And the first time someone looks at one of your videos, Jen, they're going to be like, oh, wait, it's like that? Yeah, right. And, and I can see where this would be a problem. Now, I'm not making any excuses because I agree. Now, that's one of the reasons why... As many times, you know, I've been around this sport a while now, and I've had several people, especially when they see me take my shirt off and start changing in my suit, start asking me why I don't fight. <laughs> right. and I'm a 135-pound Bruce Lee underneath my suit, and I, but I'm not trained in anything, and I wouldn't have the disrespect for not only yeah, the crowd, know. but the opponents about getting in there and acting like I think I could do something. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I, I, yeah. I respect it too much and I think a lot of people learn that and uh, sadly several potential opponents have probably learned that lesson because of you and, and what you've done in there so now that you get a chance to compete against people who are also training and who also are probably getting a lot of drops here and there now you for see sure. what you're made and of and you know, here, that's here how you I knew that it was going to be the ultimate test for me like if, I, if this is something that I really wanted to do and make a career out of then I need to go test my skills against the best of the best you know the best in the state and, you know, I always I always was at, like, MMA shows downstate, and I would see James Gray and Bobby Cooper there and an SFS, and I'd just be like, man, you know, that team is professional, and they're legit. And, 
you know, everything about their team was, you know, professional and elite, and it's just, like, exactly where I felt that I needed to be, you know, to make my career, you know, if I wanted to make something of myself and this is what I wanted to do, I needed to be there training. So, you know, I had to do what I needed to do to, you know, make that happen. And, you know, once I did, it was, it, you know, I, there was no looking back for me. I fitted in so well, you know, James, James and Bobby are great, you know. So it's just like the perfect fit. I knew that's where I needed to be. Right now, where did you come? Where did you live up at, uh, up north? In uh, Traverse City. Oh, you live in Traverse City? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. I, I fly. Two three one, two three one, baby. Sorry. Hell yeah, two three one, baby. That's right. Two three one. Oh yeah. You don't know about that, James. Oh, so you you were at the cage aggression fights then? <laughs> uh, I didn't go to too many of those, no. But I have gone to a couple. Oh, okay. How do you spell your last name? T O M A N T E. Amante. You've probably seen her around, James. You've been at King of the Cage shows, and she's fought in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Um, okay, I kn- I've seen you before. I think you know who I am, James Lee. Yeah, I- I've seen your face. Yeah, I've seen you before. Yeah. I've seen you around. See me. Okay. Why why are you getting quiet? Who me? Why are you guys all getting quiet now? I was letting you letting you roll with this and now you're just kinda of like, Yeah. And there's nothing following now. <laughs> now come on. Uh but see and this is this is kinda of what we talk about and if you don't mind for just a second. You know, a lot of our listeners are people who are just getting started, people who don't know guys like, you know, we've just been talking about unsung heroes or people that have been around that you just never hear about, you know, like Florence Cerro yeah. is one of those people, uh, Shaw yeah. you know, J- James Lee, uh, Don Richard, different people over the years. And even before that Roop and a couple other cats, uh, that were getting things going. Now, when, when we get a chance, uh, to talk, uh, uh, to different amateurs that are just getting started, cause we're not bougie here on this show. We enjoy talking to people that don't know what's going on yet because uh, it, it's really fun to educate folks and, and get them started. And so, you know, this is a good lesson for anybody out there that's from these areas that wants to continue that, that has been tested a few times and realizes this is something they want to get better at. Now, when you yeah. live up here, when you live up here, the truth of the matter is there's some decent places where you can get by getting ready for some amateur fights. But if you make a, a choice to make that transition, moving downstate at the very least is is something that can be done. And, and that'll test you in a lot of ways to, to figure out if you're prepared. I mean, I know James has taken in people from up north before. I know a cat in Chicago that took in a few people from up here and said, man, f- fuck you guys. He goes, Michigan sucks. You guys are a bunch of assholes. I'm like, I'm sorry, dude. You took the, not my fault, dude, but they should have went Butcher. to James. Or, or, yeah, go ahead, homie. We're not supposed to be cussing on the show, man. No, man, it's the coach. Amanda's the coach. We're cool now. Jen's cool. Jen's down. Jen's a good. Yeah, it's all know. good, man. Yeah, oh, why the fuck going. did you say that then? I can be me again. All right. Well, I thought I did. Okay. I thought I did because uh, Amanda's a coach, and they teach kids, and they were listening to their coach, and I just advised, even, you know, just was being cool. But now we're back to normal, dude. This is uncensored. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfect. So what do you? So your point, Butcher, was you can't get good training in the Honky Mountain Wilderness. Is that what you're saying? It is. It's pretty fucking honky up here, though. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying that anybody that's dedicated enough will find a way. And don't give you up. You know what? That's the, what I'm saying. You know, the way that I look at it is, you know, I was training a whole bunch up here, but the girls that were in the gym up here weren't at, you know, my caliber. They weren't on my level. And I was just going in there beating the shit out of them. And they didn't want to spar with me anymore. You know, they didn't want to do stuff. So I was just like, man, you, y'all are pussies. And then, so then I would uh, train with the guys and stuff. But then we wouldn't have, you know, we were lacking the coaching because there's not a lot of good coaches up here, as you were saying, Clifford. And, you know, when, once I went downstate, it's just, like, so professional. The classes are laid out. You have a coach here, a wrestling coach here. You know, you got someone in the cage working with you on jujitsu. You're someone doing wall work. You know, there's just every area of fighting that, you know, that you need work on. Someone's there to help you, you know. Everyone at SFS is just 
always making everybody better. There's so many professionals there, you know. It's just like I'm improving every day as a fighter because I'm working with professionals every single day, you know. Well, that's good. So you think it's a big difference between training up north and training down at, at SFS? Completely. Gotcha. And when we say this, uh, these you know coaches will be the first to tell you, hey man, this this uh, competitor that I've got is getting ready, and I'm trying to talk him into going downstate and figuring things out. Now let's talk about the commitment now, because you know part of the formula for this is you got to change your life a little bit. What kind of uh, uh, living arrangements did you did you work out, or do you have sponsors take care of that? I mean, I know you got a two three one number in here, but at the same yeah. time. You know, I don't yeah. know if you're traveling. What, uh, what, what's, what's your situation? Is, uh, I'm actually a chef up north, and I've been with the company for five years, Magnum Hospitality, and they're super good to me. And so I tried working downstate when I went down there, but I took a pretty pretty big pay cut. And I was also working nights being a chef and all. And then I was missing training, and it was just, like, messing with my head. I was like, man, I didn't move down here to work. Like, I got to figure something out, you know. So I quit my job downstate, and I just kept my job up north, and I do, like, 40, 40 to 50 hours in, like, four three days. I just cram, like, mad hours in on the weekend. And then uh, I go back downstate and train all week. And, yeah, so that's what I do. And I live Sweet. with Bobby and Jim. Wow. That's but, uh, dedication. You, know, you got to do what you got to do, you know? I mean... It's definitely what I want, so that's what makes me happy. Well, a lot of people say that, Jen, but not a lot of people live it. That's why we're talking to you. Right. Yeah. That's it's sweet. It's truly my passion, you know. When I don't have MMA in my life and I'm not training, it's just like, man, whoo, i got to get back to training. Well, I will be in that great wish. honky mountain wilderness. When was when, when, October 10th? What? Are you coming up there? October 10th. Yeah, I think I'm coming up to uh, to ref a show up there. The the is cage aggression. Oh, okay. Are you? I am. Nice. I'm, I'm coming to ref a show there. Muskegon. I'm doing a show in Muskegon that night somewhere. I think. Yeah. Something like that. Jen and I, Jen and I will be linking up, and then we're gonna fight every wigger in Traverse City that night. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> We'll that's what the fuck we're. We'll, uh, that's what the fuck we're gonna do. We'll, we'll take them down to the open space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, ask Christos about the open space. I, I've seen him fight there several times back in '92. Uh, Ooh. '93, but uh, go, going forward with that. Okay, now so now as you get ready, you know you're you're a little closer to your contest than our, our last guest, Amanda Cooper, was. Now. What are you? I know you guys are traveling to Louisiana to get your final uh, work in, yeah, and you're going to be awesome. finishing up a weight cut. Now, how much time has your uh, coaches spent on your opponent? What do you know about Amberlynn? <laughs> I just love saying that, uh, Amberlynn Orr. <laughs> and yeah, um, uh, you know, we definitely know what she brings to the table. You know, we're more than prepared to beat her. She. Uh, she definitely likes to go to the ground. I like to stand up a lot. I'm super strong on the ground. I like to wrestle. Um, my wall works solid. So, you know, I know that she's probably going to want the fight to go to the ground, and that's okay because, you know, me and my coaches and teammates have been drilling, 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 and working hard in the gym to prepare for Amberlynn. So, you know, whatever she's going to bring to the table, it's all good because we're prepared. So. Jane? Talking to somebody. Sorry. No, I said some people walking by. Um, no, no problem. So, when you, when you get ready for a fight, Jen, how do you, I like to ask fighters this question too, how do you, do you have nerves? And if you do have nerves, how do you thwart the, the negative energy that's, that's brought in and the anxiety? How do you deal with that? You know, I listen to a lot of motivational tapes, uh, videos. Eric Thomas is a man. Um, cool. you know, let's do a lot of music, try to clear my mind, read a lot of books, you know, stuff that's positive, motivational, just keep my mind right. Uh, I like to write a lot of stuff down when I'm in fight camp, um, write about my training days, drilling, you know, morning and night, stuff like that, you know, 
keep my mind occupied and off of off of food. <laughs> now, how how big of a weight cut do you you cut? Uh, I do about twenty five pounds. Twenty five, and what do you do to do that? Like, you want a strict diet? Just yeah. keep eating like shit, or do you just pump up the cardio and cut <laughs> no, it that way? I uh, do a solid diet, and then you know, I do a water weight or a water cut at the end. Which okay. Sucks balls, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, how do you, how do you, how do you do your water cut? When you cut the water uh, off? With, uh, Ep- Epsom salt bath. Epsom salt bath. And then I'm sure you drink a ton of water uh, in your training camp. When do you take the, you know, um, say you're, say you're the week of, of the fight you're weigh in, when do, when do you start cutting the water and take down? Um, you know, I've, I've been loading up on two gallons a day right now, just pounding the water as much as I can so that, you know, I can do water manipulation at the end. That last week I'll probably, you know, cut it down to, I'll do it real slow, cut it down to a gallon and a half, then a gallon, you know, then keep it at like three liters a day, 0.5, stuff like that, you know, and then just bring it down slowly and then see where my weight's at, you know. It, it all depends on where I'm at with weight, but, you know, I definitely would like to do it as as uh, easy as possible. Okay. Um, I When I'm not getting ready in fight camp, I love to lift weights. Uh, growing up, both my parents were bodybuilders, so, you know, I grew up around that environment before I found mixed martial arts and so I love to lift weights, and I have a lot of uh, muscle to cut at the end. And I'm sure you guys know that sucks a ton. So at the end, I cut a lot of muscle with water. I can identify. I'm a bodybuilder myself, too, so. I appreciate oh, yeah. the compliment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I told you I looked like 100. I, I weighed myself uh, yesterday. Yeah, I, I, always, 130, I always knew you were. 135. Like, damn. Yeah, I was quite taken back too. The bird, the bird, the bird, the bird chest caught me off guard. <laughs> hey, Bruce Lee was one thirty-five too. That's all I'm saying. That he was. I can see it now. You kind of got a Bruce Lee body. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty shredded. You oh, yeah. saw a good kick. That's like saying, you know, it's not fair when a skinny guy has abs. It's true. I get it's funny because I have to go change in the in the, in the dang locker rooms all the time. And people are like, dude, look at you! And I'm like, come on now, this is country living, good eating. Yeah, everybody, everybody hates on me for my abs too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny shit, man. So, uh, so all right, well, we're getting close here. So, I wanted to definitely give James a chance for a final question, and then we'll give you a chance to shout out all the people that help you make this traveling and training possible to continue this career. But first, James, it's uh, to the final question. Have you ever farted in the bathtub and it stunk really bad? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> we just turned to Bobby you have, right? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to take on that, Butcher. What do you think? you think it's bullshit or you think she's telling the truth? I think every single person in the world has. I would have to, I would have to concur with you, sir. So, Jen, I'm not going to be a fan of yours now because you lied under oath on this radio station. <laughs> she didn't say no. She said, what the fuck? That was her answer. Yeah, I did. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> I think I don't know. I'm gonna have to replay this now. I, I'm gonna swear she said no. What the fuck? <laughs> what is, she did say that too. What is a woman supposed to say to that? That's hilarious. Well, all right. That was great too, by the way. Perfect diffuser and uh, conclusion to this portion of the show. <laughs> now I want to say thank you again. It's Jen Pomonte. Look that stuff up. You know she's another member of Scorpion Fighting Systems, traveling to Mississippi to bring back a bantamweight championship to Michigan and Traverse City to the 231. And at this point, I want to give you a chance to recognize, you know, even if somebody's like watching your dog or somebody for you, 
hanging out, getting you, you help, know, you know, chef, boss, whoever, you know, whoever's out there that, that has your back. Give them a chance to be recognized. All right. First, I would like to say thank you to James Stray, Bobby Cooper, Brian Quartero, everybody at Scorpion Fighting System, all my teammates and family there. You guys are awesome, and I love you all. I wouldn't be where I'm at if it wasn't for you guys. Um, I would also like to thank Dragon Dew Fight Gear, uh, Fighter Elias for helping me out with clothing sponsors, uh, my mom and dad, of course, and all my friends and family that support me. Thank awesome. You. I just looked up I just, I just looked up Amanti on uh the internet here and it says it stands for a uh, fart in French. Sorry. <laughs> no. Pomanti means to fart in French. No way. Oh shit. That can't be true. That's why. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you very much, Jen, and best of luck in your contest. Can't wait to uh, talk to you about how that shiny new belt looks on wherever, uh, oh, whatever yeah. shelf thank you get. Thank you guys for having me on the show. I had fun. Thanks for coming on. Good luck to you. I'll be bringing that belt back home to Michigan. Hell yeah, baby. All right. Thank you. Thank you.